say that word one more time? Characteristics. Para colocar las mariquitas. A ver, miren, ya nos quedan aquí unas. Vamos a terminar. I'm here to tell you about our stage class. When you walk into a SEAL classroom, whether it's preschool, whether it's first grade, second grade, or fifth grade, the classroom is alive with learning. If it gets their prey, they use the claws to open their body, then they can eat their... Oh, yes, they do. How scientific. The critical years of language development are zero to eight years old. That is the time when the brain is wired for language. So it's so important that we're at the earliest ages building on the assets that kids bring as well as developing the richness that their brain is firing off for. Olivia Bowler and Rachel Carson are similar because they wrote books. SEAL is fundamentally about language and language development. Humans should protect the earth, they must, they must. To develop language along with thinking within the context of learning about the world. What is it asking us to do? Jasmine? To compare and contrast. Asking us to compare and contrast. The language kids are using, the reading, the writing, the development of literacy skills, the engagement in discourse and dialogue with each other is intentionally designed to both develop their language and literacy skills, but also to create the purpose for language and literacy skills and to engage them in the language that they need to express their thoughts and eventually their opinions. Lost the men and the people, the work and work where the bloody hands and the pickets were not. It's really about this level of engagement, this level of ownership that kids really understand and own their classroom and the learning that's happening in their classroom. Equal pay, equal water, give us money and give us food. Oftentimes, students have a very disconnected experience in school where what one teacher is doing in one grade is radically different from what the teacher is doing in the next. Please turn to your partner. Please share with your partner, please. Um, then he gave it a game. Rachel Carson and Olivia Bowler are different because Rachel Carson stop pollution and Olivia Bowler saved the birds. In SEAL, we know the importance of alignment and articulation. That when students are familiar with a strategy or a way of learning things, they can more deeply engage and we can build upon those strategies. Calabazas aquí, calabazas allí, calabazas, calabazas alrededor de mí. Germans came from better living conditions. Seeking freedom in politics and religion. One way that we approach the need for articulation and alignment with SEAL is through what we have articulated as a set of high leverage pedagogical practices. Depending upon which grade level or grade span you're working in, there are between 10 and 11 of these practices and they're aligned. So whatever's happening in preschool is a precursor and a setup to what comes in kindergarten through third grade, which then is extended and built upon in fourth and fifth grade. Context clues. Context clues. Context clues is something that you're already familiar with. You've been a SEAL student for four years now. You've been working on vocab and context, and so you know how to find clues in the text to determine the meaning of an unknown word. For a preschool, and a kindergarten classroom, hands-on inquiry-based learning. That will look like dramatic play. Kids are putting on the costumes of and role-playing the learning in the midst of that content. ¿Qué parte le ves a la abeja? That grows through the grade levels up into the fourth and fifth grade and upper elementary, where the kids are not only have a research center, but they have multiple research centers where their inquiry driven learning happens multiple times throughout the unit. What did the hydraulic mining do? Cause floods. Yeah, it caused floods. Collaborative practice is another one of those components of SEAL that starts at the very early ages. And we are very explicit. We teach kids what it looks like, what it sounds like to be good collaborators, to work in collaboratively. I want to begin with this chart here. It says collaborative conversations. Say that with me. Collaborative conversations. You could like, you have to talk together and at the same topic and then go like turns, like when your partner talks and we talk.
That becomes, as kids get older, collaborative projects. Kids are given much more autonomy and authority in the various roles that they play within collaboration. And understanding how rich collaboration evolves as you grow and as you learn and develop is essential to seal across the grade levels. We're going to cut this one because the wood is used for solid furniture. Solid furniture. Yeah, because we're going to have to cut this one and all of these for we can make a sentence. Another high leverage pedagogical practice is the use of graphic organizers and visuals. In preschool, we use a lot of visuals through the use of pictures and realia, um, hands-on manipulatives, and this sort of concrete way of learning about the world and understanding the world. These graphic organizers are the foundation for beginning to develop higher order thinking skills like categorization and classification or comparing and contrasting. When we move up through the grade span into kindergarten through third grade, students continue this hands-on manipulation, and we also very intentionally use these as a means to teach the language associated with these higher order thinking skills. So students begin to associate graphic organizers with sophisticated academic language structures that accompany it. Initially, the farmer grows the gene, grows the cotton. There was a, a hungry farmer who lived in a rural area. A student thrives when they have an aligned set of educational experiences, when the approach to learning is consistent throughout their educational experience. Let's work on our first sentence. The word is Oh, so how would we say that in English? Um, the wood oh. is smooth. Rough. Smooth. Can we say the wood uh, is rough? No, it's rough. rough. When we create a space for students to make those cross-language connections and to bring their whole linguistic repertoire, we create an environment in which students are more able to effectively learn both of the languages that they're learning in school and to be more successful. ¿Cómo se dice paleontólogo en inglés? Paleontólogo. Son los cognados, entonces es lo bonito de los dos idiomas que podemos aprender algo en un español y lo podemos hacer la conexión en inglés, es el puente o esa conexión. ¿Cómo se dice? Erupciones. Pero en inglés, eruptions. Sí, sí, ajá. También es también es un cognado, eruptions. Teachers need to be provided the resources, including time, but also support via coaching and collaboration in order to enact the ELA, ELD framework. Without honoring the need that the teachers have, we cannot see the shift that we want to see uh, in the classroom. The other thing that we were also thinking about, right, was using those cause and effect graphic organizers. So using that with something known. I yeah, see what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this new era of standards requires a cataclysmic shift in education, and part of what needs to shift is is the system. And in order for teachers to do this heavy lift and to centralize the needs of English learners in this very rigorous time, it requires that schools and districts re-engineer the way they think about the profession. So think of all the powerful knowledge you have about the two languages and how many things we were able to talk about. Okay. At SEAL, we are pulling the best of educational change, of research, of teaching and learning, of working across systems and partnering with families. We're pulling that all together in the most powerful way to enact what we know is the most incredible learning experiences for our students. All of those things are happening in your brains as you are translating. Isn't that amazing? That's powerful stuff.